Hi, if you like me, a little bit serious about EMC pre-compliance testing, then uh, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to perform a conducted emission test using TechBox EMC View software to control the spectrum analyzer to perform a CISPR 25 classified conducted emission test. TechBox has been developing this EMC View software for many years. Uh, from the first time I used it to now, there are many more new features enabled, which include uh, simultaneous sweeping, um, more advanced reporting function, quasi-peak scanning, and a lot more. So in this video, I'm going to use this as a tutorial to show you how to use the software efficiently. And uh, this is just the software interface. And after the, all the tests, you can produce a nice test report such as this just by clicking the software, which is again a very useful function if you want to communicate with your team uh, much more efficiently. So if this makes you interested, then keep watching. Here's the test setup, very simple CISPR 25 uh, DC conducted emissions setup for automotive application. We have the spectrum analyzer connected to the listen. Now we connect it to the 12 volts line. Uh, via this uh, transient limiter, we have the uh, power supply to power the unit. Uh, we have some ferrite to suppress the noise coming from the power supply unit itself. The lizard then is connected to the DUT. In this case, the DUT is a step-down bulk converter, steps 12 volts down to 5 volts. Imagine this is your first prototype, your first revision of your design, and you have no idea how the EMC performance is, and you want to test it against, say, CISPR 25 class 5, which is the most stringent conducting emission. So let's have a look. Let's open EMC view. And first step is to connect to the spectral analyzer, so device, search, select the device and click connect. And if once it is connected, there's a message showing here and here you can see licensed. Okay, so that means the spectrum analyzer is connected successfully. Because the test we are going to perform is a CISPR 25 conducting emission for automotive pre-compliance. Therefore, we need to load the correct setup file for this pre-compliance test. So to do that, go to File, Load EMC Project, click that. This will give you the access to the source folder. So if I go up one level, up another level, so this is everything under the source folder. As you can see, there are many testing standards that you can apply. So in this case, we know it's a CISPR 25 test, therefore I'm going to double click CISPR 25. On the CISPR 25, there were three folders. CN means conducted emission, RN means radiated emission, and TC stands for TEM cell. Okay, so in this case, it's conducted emission, double click. Under the conducted emission folder, you can see there are about 10 projects files which tests from class 1 all the way to class 5 and under each class you have both the voltage setup or the current setup. In this case we are using LISN as a voltage test setup therefore we will select class 5 voltage test setup. Okay, We select class 5 because class 5 is the most stringent limit. If you select class 1 then it is the most relaxed limit for automotive conducting emission testing. Current test setup is slightly different with the voltage test setup, which hopefully we will demonstrate this in another time. So in this case, double click. Software is loading the selected project file. As you can see here, now the project file is successfully loaded. So on the main interface, we can see the 
sweeping frequency from 150 kilohertz all the way to about 108 megahertz. This is actually defined in here, which you can change the value if you want. And then the vertical on the vertical, and the limit is set between minus 20 to 100 dB microvolts. Okay, again, you don't need to change, but feel free to change if you feel need you need to. The red and blue lines uh, indicates the average limit and the peak limit. The light blue showing here is the quasi peak limit for class five. Okay, here you can select margin. So if Normally, I would put 3 dB as a conducted emission margin, so I can put 3 dB here. Cable correction. Basically, you can put some small dB value to compensate the loss introduced by the cable connection. But normally, I just leave it as zero um, or leave it as is by default because this is a simple pre-compliance test setup. We can leave it as it is. Listen, correction factor pretty much does the same thing. So in this case, because I'm using uh, TBOH01, therefore I need to select TBOH01. So I select that. Now, if you can remember, in the test setup, we have a transient limiter to protect the RF input of the spectrum analyzer. And we know that it is actually essentially uh, a combined uh, clamping diode and a high pass filter. So in that sense, it has some insertion loss and it's about 10 dB. So we need to compensate that, uh, that loss. So you can compensate it in this ampli amplifier correction file. Click that. As you can see, TechBox has already got the transient limiter correction factor uh, available. So all I need to do is just click click this and enable that. Antenna correction is more for far field radiated emission using an antenna. Uh, this is basically the antenna factor uh, we can uh, place in. But this this is a conducted emission test setup, therefore we put none. As you can see, uh, this is the segment file. Basically, it controls the sweep. In this case, you can see that the green trace is for average uh, sweep and the pink one is for peak sweep. All right, so the newer version of the EMC view enables simultaneous measurement depending on the spectrum analyzer. In this case, we are using a Siglent SSA spectrum analyzer and the EMC view software can enable simultaneous measurement when when you enable the function, the spectrum analyzer will basically perform uh, average and peak scanning at the same time, which is really handy and can save time. But you need you need to enable that function. To enable that function, go to uh, setup options, and as you can see here, I already enabled the simultaneous measurement of two traces. Here, the software tells you which types of the spectrum analyzer that is support for this function. Okay, so I can just exit. So now I'm ready and all I need to do is click the start and then we will perform the conducting emission test. Um, but what I'm going to do first is, as I said, you need to switch on the power first, then connect, make the connection um, between the spectrum analyzer and the lizard. Then I'm going to click this one. Okay. So we power the unit up. As you can see, it starts drawing current, about 1.2 amps. We see the LED light is on. So the unit is switched on now. So now I'm going to connect uh, the lizard output to my spectral analyzer. And then I start doing the scan. And immediately, as you can hear now, we have some beeping noise, which indicates the noise level is so high that it exceeds the uh, ADC level of the spectrum analyzer, even with the transient limiter, indicating the noise level is extremely high. So in order to protect the spectrum analyzer, I disconnect uh, the, re uh, the connection to the receiver now. So in cases like this, we know that the noise level 
is extremely high with the CISPR 25 test setup. So now we have a few options. We can use the internal attenuator and disable the uh, pre-amplifier because in this setup, if if now I'm just doing a empty scan, then you will see the attenuator inside the spectra analyzer is set to be zero dB, and we have the pre-amplifier on. So that's why we have great sensitivity. But as we know, it's in this setup, this noise is way too big. We can tell EMC to switch off the pre-amplifier and turn on the internal attenuator, maybe perhaps to start with 20 dB. And after we made some improvement of our board, then we can slowly uh, you know, introduce pre-amplifier back on and turn off the internal attenuator. So now I'm going to show, uh, show you how to do it properly. Okay, as we said, it looks like if we just uh, do the sweep based on the default uh, setting, the spectral analyzer doesn't like it because the DUT in this case produce uh, such a high level of noise that can potentially damage the RF inputs of the spectral analyzer. It keeps beeping, giving the ADC overloading error message. So in this case, as we explained, we can actually change the setting so as we can enable uh, 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 the internal attenuator in the spectral analyzer and disable the, the pre-amplifier uh, in the spectral analyzer so as to protect the RF uh, inputs of the spectral analyzer and also perform the test as we want. How do we do that? Okay, so as we explained, all the important setup files are under the source folder. So we need to go to the folder to do that. To do that, let's go to drive C drive. And yeah, so by default, my EMC view is installed in this folder. So if I double click and I can uh, view the uh, EMC view folder, all the important setup files are under the source folder. So double click this. We already explained it should be under CISPR 25, double click, and it should be under conducted emission, okay? So in conducting emission, as you can see, we have many files under under this under this uh, folder. The file we're interested in is the file that can change the attenuation and also the preamplifier. And those functions are in the segment file. As you can see here, we have average segment file and peak segment uh, file. Right. Just to have a quick introduction of how it works, basically the project file will be uh, put in the file called project, as you can see, dot prj means project. We are using class 5 voltage, so if I double click, you can see basically it calls the function and then all these values are basically put as default value in the EMC view software. And, I, and it calls the average scan and peak scan by calling these two functions, which is segment one and segment two, and they are conducting emission, CISPR 25, average seg, seg, and peak seg. So if we want to change the function, we need to go to these two segment files, okay? Go back to before, we have average seg and peak seg, okay? So in this case, I don't want to change it um, the, the you know the, the default file because this is this comes with the software. So what I normally do is I just copy and paste. So I copy and paste. Therefore, there's a new one uh, here, and then do the same for the peak. Copy and paste. I can then rename it, right? So in this case, let's let's go inside and have a look. So if you go inside, you can see basically from 150 kilohertz all the way to 108 megahertz, the software needs to divide this frequency range into small segments. And under each segment, you have the starting frequency, in this case 150K, and stop frequency, 2.5 megahertz. The bandwidth, according to CISPA 25 standards, is 9, 9 kilohertz, and this defines the sweep time, again, according to standards. Now, here is the interesting part. The detector is average, because this is average scanning, and you can see here the attenuator is set as zero and preamplifier is on. So we know this is 
not good for the DUT we test. Therefore, we want to first disable preamplify, right? So in this case, I can just say uh, I want to put preamplifier from on to off. So to do that, and I need to do for each segment. So this, you can see this is segment one, and then you have segment two. So how do we do it uh, easily? We can just go to edit and replace. This is the function we want. So we just want to uh, switch off the preamplifier. And so we can just put find on and replace off, right? So if we find on, that's here, and then we replace it to be off, then basically we turn off the preamplifier. So let's just to replace all of them, okay? So now you can see preamplifier has been turned off. I'm happy with that. I can just close it, save. I can also rename it. So for example, I can rename it as average scam, but pre amp off. Okay, so I know the difference between this one and this one is just the preamplifier off. So let's do the same thing for peak. So on peak, I can go to edit and then do replace and then find on, replace with off, replace all. Okay, do the same trick. Close, save, and I'll rename it. Peak, pre, and off. Now, I just wanted to highlight here, and again, if we go to average, because the software, the way it works is to basically divide the whole frequency range into each uh, small segment, or is it called segment? Yes, it is called segment, because you can select segment, and then you can see here, for example, there are altogether 15 segments. In most of the cases, you will find actually as the higher frequency, the um, the noise is actually not that big compared to the lower frequency. So for that, I actually what I can do is I can only I can just change the setup, the file we just did, maybe from segment one to four or maybe from segment one to eight, and then from eight to fifteen I can just uh, use a different setup. So the benefits of doing that is because we know that once you enable attenuator, disable preamplifier, your sensitivity drops. Um, and you, of course, you want you always want to have a better sensitivity. So to do that, you can you know sacrifice the sensitivity in this re uh, frequency range where you have problems with the um, ADC overload, and then here you can uh, still enjoy a better sensitivity by using the uh, another different setup. So that's something I just need to quickly highlight. Okay, so we have everything. Uh, changed and we can uh, reload this new segment file, right? So if I close this, now the problem is because I just changed in the folder, the software cannot find this newly added segment file. So we we just need to reload the software again. So in this case, I'm just gonna switch off the software and then do it again. Okay, so let's do it again. Load software, class five. Okay, and I need to uh, connect the device as well. Connect it. Okay, so again, uh, I should have saved the previous uh, setup as as my. Uh, set up, but it's fine. Let's just um, put everything back to uh, where it should be. Amplifier, we had uh, this, yeah, and that's it. So now we need to change the segment file as explained. So in this case, I can do average, and you can see if I uh, scroll down, I should be able to find average preamplifier off. Okay, so that's the the, the file we just changed. I'm happy to use that. And I can do the same trick for peak. Ah, here, peak segment off. Okay, perfect. 
So these two are actually loaded. So um, this time, let me save this project first because when I saved it, next time, if I need to switch off the EMC view and then switch it on again, I can quickly load this uh, document, right? So I can save it uh, in this project file, which I'm actually happy, so I'll do that. And I just say, um, add a note saying min zhang. So that means I changed it, and that's my own uh, file. So I'll save it here, okay? Now, let's have a look um, with this new setup file, uh, together with the translimiter, if the spectra analyzer can scan the DUT, which has very bad noise, without beeping, okay? As we just saw, the noise produced by the DUT is still a little bit high, so the spectral analyzer still doesn't like it. So in that case, let's go to the folder again and change uh, the setting again. So go to EMC view, source. Now I can go to CISPR25, conductive emission. And if I find the file I just changed, uh, which is uh, amplify off, amplify off. Okay, so apparently it doesn't like it. Let's try uh, add uh, the attenuator in. So in this case, I think we can just add uh, attenuator, 10, 10 dB attenuator. It should, should do the job. So let's add attenuator in each segment uh, uh, of the, the file, okay? Same applies to the peak segment. So here we just add 10 dB in each segment in the peak scanning. It's always better to just restart the EMC view software from the beginning to make sure that the change actually takes effect. Okay, so now let's uh, load the project. In this case, I can load the previous uh, project because I only changed the uh, attenuator. When you load the uh, project you save, the basic saved everything you predefined before. In this case, you know the listen has been um, the, the correct one, and also we have the transient limiter. And also, I didn't change the name of the second file. It says preamplify off, but now we know in this case we also enable 10 dB attenuator. So let's have a look. Well, in this case, when we enable the 10 dB attenuator and disable the preamplifier, finally, and also don't forget we also have a transient limiter. Finally, the uh, spectra analyzer does not complain anymore. Right, TUT is on, drawing current, and as we can see here. We have the results. So we can see now the spectral analyzer doesn't complain, and we have both the average and peak scanning results showing on the main uh, interface. Notice we have the raw data enabled, so you can see there is some offset, and that offset basically is hardware transient limiter we use, uh, and some other uh, uh, correction file here. Um, the the preamplifier and attenuator in the spectral analyzer are self-compensated, so therefore there's no need to compensate for the uh, 10 dB attenuator in the spectral analyzer. So in this case, if I just uh, disabled uh, the raw data, so perhaps this uh, shows you better results, you can see clearly this unit will fail classify limit because uh, the green trace, which is the average result in the lower frequency range, is close to 100 dB microvolts. Uh, you can see here 90 dB microvolts, 90 dB microvolts, and the limit is 50. So we got 40 dB over the limit. No wonder uh, the spectral analyzer complains a lot. Okay, so we just need to wait until the scan finishes. Okay, so the scan is complete. As you can see, we have uh, both peak and 
average scanning results showing on the main interface. Uh, as we disabled raw data, so if I just enabled raw data, this is actually the raw data coming from the spectrum analyzer. And of, obviously, we need to compensate for the transit limiter and listen, things like that. Okay, so now with results like this, you have a few options. I mean, this is a pretty bad design because the emission basically exceeds limits in every. Uh, frequency point, let's say. So there's no, not much use in terms of uh, a, a deep dive into one particular frequency. I mean, this is a bad design. We need to redesign the system or add filters, things like that. But still, we need to compare the performance once we have a new design or once we put filter in. So it is always a good idea to record uh, the results. To record results, what I of often do is I go to File, uh, and I do Utilities, and I Save. Now, you can save a uh, chart, and on the Save chart, you have Chart and Traces. So in this case, I'll just quickly explain what are charts and what are traces. So everything here is chart, and traces are basically here. Because we haven't enabled, we haven't done any comparison yet, so there's no trace to save. So normally here, I just say uh, save chart and chart only, and I save them. So all the uh, results will be saved in the folder called out, basically, is your uh, results. So in this case, I often uh, create a new folder. So in this case, we can say it's uh, DUT1, that's uh, DUT1, and on the on the DUT one, I can say test results, and I can say test result benchmark. Okay, so that's basically our first result. So we can save it, and basically the result will be saved in the um, in a data format. So the benefit of doing this is you can then recall all the data saved and compare. And so, for example, if you make a filter and then you see the improvement, you want to compare the improvement, you can then load this saved data and then compare, which will demonstrate. But before we do um, the next uh, sweep, let's have a look at uh, um, the result. Obviously, there is lots of harmonics based on the switching frequency of the DC-DC converter. So in this case, we can see that uh, the first point, as the easy way of seeing this is you can actually see here, because in this little box, it lists all the points that exceeds the limit. So in this case, you can see 172 kilohertz, we exceed the limit. Um, and it, it even tells you that uh, it, how much does it exceed the limit. So in this case, uh, the one, 172 kilohertz is actually here, is actually here, right? And it tells you it exceeds the margin by minus 2.5 dB, okay? So the 225 is our main switching uh, noise spectrum here. So it, it detects it's, um, okay, let's uh, disable raw data now. It detects it's about 90 dB microvolts, so it exceeds the... Uh, or define the margin uh, by 38 dB, so that's a lot. And then you can trace the next one, which is 560, 60, uh, 13, and, and so on. You can also select the six maximum peaks. So if I select that, it tells you, you know, the six maximum points. You can focus on this first, okay? Um, you can also perform quasi-peak measurements, but as I said, for results like this, there's no point to perform any quasi-peak measurements because this is bad enough, right? You have to solve the, the, the big problem before you look at some specific uh, frequency range where you might have uh, challenges. So as I said, we can pretty much leave the results as it is. And then the next, we're going to add some filters, make some change on this PCB. Then we perform an, another test. Another useful function I would like to introduce is that um, if you click 
EMC view and most of the time you'll see a software interface like this but there's a useful function which is uh, in setup and options where you can tick load last project which means for whatever reason for example if I just made some change on the segment files uh, enable pre-amplifier or enable attenuators and I need to restart the MC view then every time I restart the MC view the last loaded project is always uh, there so save me some time so now I enable this function apply and exit so for example if now I load uh, this which is the uh, saved project file we had yeah there we are so all the setup are saved in this project file we know so now let's say if I close uh, the EMC view okay so the EMC view now is closed and let's say we restart EMC view again and you should see the saved project is loaded yeah so that actually saves me from reloading the project every time when I restart the EMC view software Okay, so as you can see, we made some change on the DUT. Um, we made some change on the caps. On the back, we put some ceramic caps. And also, we had this uh, LC filters in the front. So hopefully, this change would make the DUT performance better. The DUT is set up exactly the same as before, and it's connected to Spectrum Analyzer. So all I'm going to do is to uh, switch on the power supply. Okay, yeah, the power supply is on, the DUT is on. Now I can safely connect the, to the um, spectrum analyzer and I'm ready for a scan. Go to EMC view and we can start the scanning. Okay, so now, uh, the MC view starts the scanning, we can go to the result. As you can see, the noise has been significantly reduced. We can only see two spikes in this scan and the rest is pretty much just flat. Now, don't be fooled by this because the software setup will still have attenuator 10 dB and we haven't got any um, pre-amplifier there. So, in order to see more in terms of the EMC profile, we need to turn back the preamplifier and get rid of the attenuator to increase the sensitivity of the spectrum analyzer so we can capture more information. Okay, so as you can see here on the uh, software, we can only see two spikes, and you can see we the, the noise now is definitely below the limit, but surely there will be something more there. The reason that we can only see this flat line is because of the reduced sensitivity introduced by the attenuator. So all we need to do is we need to change back to the previous segment file and we do another scan. Okay, okay. So, so let's try that. that. So if I can just stop the scanning now, okay, so you can temporarily stop the scanning. And we know that these two files are the uh, modified segment files we use because uh, of the issue before. Now we're confident enough that the noise level is really low. All we need to do is we can just click here and we can just load the original segment file back, which is an average segment. Yeah, so I can load that. And here again, I can load the peak file back again. So let's see, um, peak segment. Okay, so all I, all I did really was to change these two segments, the sweep segment files, back to the previous, well, the default uh, files, which we know has the attenuator off and preamplifier on. Now, with great good confidence that we know that it won't cause the spectrum analyzer RF input overloading, we can start uh, the, the scanning again. Okay, so let's see. Now we enable the preamplifier, as you can see on the screen, and attenuator is 0 dB. 
look at the result. We have much lower noise floor to start with, and as a result, we increase the sensitivity. We can see more spikes. This is what we want. And also, the spectral analyzer doesn't complain uh, because the noise level now is it can be handled. Okay, so that's great. Here on the EMC view, we can also see that much more information is showing here compared to the previous setting. Again, for, uh, for, for me to see it clearly, I can disable the raw data in this case. So again, green trace is the average scan and purple trace or pink trace is the uh, peak scanning results. As you can see now, we with this setup, or with this modification of the EUT, we are confident, at least in the lower frequency range, we should be able to pass the um, CISPA 25 CAS5 limit. Okay, so let's have a look at this new result. From 150 kilohertz all the way up to here, which I think is 60, yeah, 60 megahertz, we pass the conducted emission quite comfortably, but from 60 megahertz to 90 and 100, we have resonance peak, and both average and peak results exceeds limit, as we can see here. We have some narrow band signals here, which are caused by the local uh, radio transmitters, so I'm not to worry about this. So the focus really is now to reduce the emissions here. We know the average result exceeds limits by more than 10 dB, so that's a big challenge. But look at the peak uh, results. It exceeds limits by less than 10 dB, and often you can perform a quasi-peak scanning. And the quasi-peak scanning most of the time will be below uh, the peak limit line. But in this case, because the quasi-peak limit is defined here, so if we do perform a quasi-peak scanning selecting one point here, chances are we might be able to pass the peak limit, but we probably uh, will still fail the quasi-peak limit line. But just for a demonstration to show this quasi-peak scanning function, I will just use this as an example. So all I need to do is I need to select a few points to perform the quasi-peak. In this case, to save time, I'm only picking one point, which is the highest uh, emission point in this region. Okay. If we zoom in, we can see sort of 72 megahertz. That's a good point to perform a quasi-peak scanning. Okay. So I can go to 72. So that's 72, as you can see here shows you exceeds the margin by uh, how much, okay? So by, bear in mind, this is the average margin. So we exceed the average by 16 dB. If we want to look at the peak, we can select the set two. Yeah, here we are. In peak scanning, it tells us go to 72 megahertz. It tells us we exceed the limit line, which is the peak limit line, by about 5 dB. Okay, so I'm just going to use this point to perform a quasi-peak. Okay, to perform quasi-peak, I can right-click and I can do measure. There are two measurements here, which is consider drift and ignore drift. So I always select consider drift, right? In another separate video, I explain the difference, but in this case, we just select consider drift. Okay, so now the software now is performing a quasi-peak around this point, and soon it will give us the results, and let's have a look what the quasi-peak looks like. So as you can see, the quasi-peak is performed in this narrow band defined here, and the software now starts to do, I think, three scanning around here, and then three scanning after this point which actually is here. If you look at the, 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 the definition here, here we have the drift span, and here, here we have the quasi-peak dwell times. Currently, it's set as three and two. I'm not changing it. Just happy to leave the setup as it is and uh, wait until scan finish to look at the quasi-peak results. Now, the reason, there's a reason uh, why we don't perform quasi-peak 
uh, you know, from for a very wide frequency range is because it takes lots of time. So in this case, as you can see, even for one point scanning, it takes a long time to perform the quasi peak. So just be patient, and we will see the quasi peak uh, results very soon. Here you can actually. Uh, trace the progress currently is one out of seven, two out of seven, three out of seven. Now we're, we're close. Okay, so we have the quasi peak results showing here. You can see the quasi peak measurement results is listed here, which is 39 dB microvolts. It's not even below the peak limit. So you can see there's a cross here. So more or less the same point, which means it will fail regardless. So we need to do something in this frequency range. But hopefully uh, this shows you how to perform a quasi-peak scanning. Uh, if you want to know more, there's a separate video just focusing on this function. Okay, so now we had, um, we performed the quasi-peak limit here and we know the quasi-peak is not good. So we need to really suppress the noise here, okay? We know that often in this frequency range is the common mode current causing the issue. So as a quick fix, I just put a two-turn ferrite in front of the LC filter we added um, before. And I wanted to just quickly check the performance of this common mode uh, choke. So we know that it takes a long time if we start scanning again. So what's the best way of doing this when we have a quick fix and we just want to check in this frequency range? Well, before we do that, let's again save this first. So if we uh, put uh, file utilities and uh, save chart, save chart only. Okay, so we can put on, again, it's a DUT1 and uh, this is our test result two. Test result, and let's say filter, fitted. Okay, so let's save this results first. All right, okay, so if I just wanted to check the performance here, there is a segment uh, box here. If you check this, you can see currently it's selected as all, okay, and the segment is defined as segment one, two, three, four. So we can see this frequency range is between segments 13 to 14 and 14 to 15. So all I can do is disconnect all and I just select 14 because 14 is this frequency range and 15. So I can just select 14 and 15. That will give us a very quick scanning because the results now are saved. So I click the scanning now. So if I click scan, you can see the software will just perform a scanning in this frequency range. You can see the results come through. Here we are. Look, this result is definitely a lot lower than previous results. Okay, so with this, we got really good confidence that uh, this final fix would solve the problem. So now I just perform a full scan again, and I'll show you how to compare results. So to perform the full scanning, let's just go here and enable all. So that's segment all, and we can just click the start, and it should start straight away. So we have the results based on the uh, modification we had. So let's call it our final product. And we can see this, this, this result is pretty good. It should pass class five limit. Now, if you want to compare the results, there's a very easy way of doing so. So go to uh, file again, then go to utilities. Then we load chart is if you load chart the results will be basically showing on the main software interface which means you'll cover this current result okay so we don't want to load chart but we want to load uh, trace so here you can see we can you have the ability to load up to three traces and each trace has actually two you can load so uh, basically in, what it means is you can see here, trace one, uh, uh, set one, trace one, set two, here, trace two, set one, trace two, set two, trace three, trace three. So each trace you can load up to two sets, which is quite handy. So let's try if we load trace one, okay? We have saved results in, in the folder called out and it's in our DUT one. 
And let's say we want to compare the benchmark results and also the first modification we make. Okay, so in this case, let's load this in our trace one. Okay, and we can also load uh, trace two as you know the, the first iteration we had. Let's try that because there are lots of data in it, so it takes a little bit of time, which is fine. And now, as I said, go to File Utilities and then load trace two. Okay, so trace two DUT one, and then I'll load uh, trace the second test where we just modify the board and put a LC filter without putting the ferrite, and we can compare the results. Okay, so all results are showing here. So obviously lots of results here. So in order to compare, uh, let's say we compare average first. So in order to do that, I can uh, Get rid of the peak results first. Same applies to set two and set two. Okay, so you can see we have three average results showing here. This is the benchmark results where the performance is terrible. This is after we made some imp improvements on the board and the LC filter is improving, but uh, we failed in the sort of FM band, let's say. Okay, so this is the uh, average in in uh, blue light blue color and this is our final results which is in green it shows really great performance you can also change the color because this is the predefined color you can see here you can edit uh, lots of things edit limit edit cable edit uh, colors oh, edit limit yeah so this is if you want to change the limit file you can add limit here Okay, so add gain, add segments. Oh, this is interesting. You can also add the segments as well. Oh, never knew that, but yeah. So there are lots of options you can explore. Okay, so this is comparing average results. And let's say if you want to compare peak results and just do the uh, do the same for the peak and you can see here's the peak result okay so let's have a look um, how we can um, present this efficiently to your colleagues and your manager okay and if you want to produce a report like this you can either um, save this right you can do utilities and uh, save export this as a, a you know as a file export it as a WMF file, which is the is the graph, right? Um, but you may want to add some nodes here, nodes here. If you want to add some nodes, there's a tool here, which is yeah. And here you have labels, so you can click labels. You can set label, okay? And here you can see label one. I can put label one, put it on here, and uh, I can see edit, and I can call it a benchmark uh, unit, yeah. And I can do the same. I set label another label, and I put somewhere here. Call it, uh, call it uh, modified version one. Okay. Do the same trick. Final one. I can. I call it modified modified version two. Okay, so I mark them so I don't forget. And yeah, so this is pretty good. Now, there's a, also a function that you can actually generate a report. So if we go to print report, that's the one. Okay, so you can actually print this uh, um, as a EMC test report if you want. But to, before we do that, you need to edit it first. So go to setup, and you can see there's an edit report function. Okay, we we'll go to here. Let's set it set up properly. The title EMC view pre compiled test report. Yeah, we can call it that. Test the standard. In this case, we know it's CISPR 25. Device under test, we call it device under test. Um, we call it bug one. Okay, my company, let's say ABC Limited. Operating voltage in this case is actually 13.5 volts. Temperature we can leave as it is. Operating, we test phase or neutral. So that's for um, uh, if you test an AC power product. In this case, we know it's on the 12 volts line, so we can say power line. Yeah. 
test site, we can see uh, our uh, office lab one. Okay. Operator, your name, let's say my name, min, or I say mz. Comment, we can say um, modification uh, using. LF loop, uh, we're using filter and uh, and a fair right. Okay, we can do that. And here shows the date and things like that. Um, I think that's it. If I close this, then we can generate a report. Let's have a look. Utilities, and then uh, we can print reports. <laughs> You can print to PDF, that's all we want. Go there and have a look what it looks like. Okay, and call it um, report one. Let's have a look. Save. And then you can see we have a report generate. Okay, here we are. Pretty, pretty good. And it, it shows the test report name. Um, everything we defined, yeah, and as you can see, the results are plotted here. And another thing is, it still shows you the peak set and peak set two. So some some results exceeding the limit. I believe this is again. This is uh, I said uh, caused by the uh, radio transmitters nearby. So you can, you can actually explain this later on. But so yeah, this is a pretty good uh, and handy results. You can just copy paste on your uh, full report and and you can basically communicate with your colleagues much more efficiently with a report like that. Okay.